I finally found one of my all-time grail boots. There's just one problem. They don't fit. I've loved engineer boots for years now, and one of my favorite brands to make them is Red Wing, but unfortunately, they don't make them in the United States anymore, and even if they did, they would probably be just a little bit too high for me. So instead, what I did was go to a magical place called eBay, and instead bought a used pair of 8268 Red Wing engineer boots. I was super excited to get these guys in the mail, but I did have one suspicion. What if they don't fit? A little bit of a backstory, I have flat feet, so buying used shoes is always a gamble for me. I have custom orthotics as well as multiple insoles for various boots that I own, just so they fit and feel comfortable. My idea was I was gonna do the exact same thing to these guys because there was no way that I was not gonna wear one of my grail boots, or so I thought. For those of you that don't know, the first engineer type boot was made by the brand Chippewa Shoe Manufacturing Company and was made for firefighters working on steam locomotives. It's also said that these boots were modeled off of an English riding boot. The reason why engineers were made for train workers was so it was easy for them to slip off their boot just in case hot coal got in it. This is actually rumored to be where the engineer boot got its nickname because the workers were working on the engines on the trains. In 1939, Wesco Boots started manufacturing the engineer boot, and if you are a fan of engineer boots, you probably know Wesco, one of the biggest engineer boot companies to this day. They died down in popularity due to World War II with the necessity of lace-up combat boots, but post-World War II, there was a resurgence with the biker community. Bikers were really drawn to the engineer boot because the lack of laces weren't gonna interfere with the motorcycle drive belts, as well as they had extra protection around their legs just in case they were ever in an accident. The style then trickled down to the rebellious youth culture and gained mainstream popularity when celebrities like Marlon Brando and James Dean were seen wearing these in movies such as The Wild One and Rebel Without a Cause. So traditionally, engineer boots are made of a leather, whether it be full grain bull hide or horse hide, and Originally, they almost always came in black. It has a stovepipe shaft, which simply put means the shaft is cylindrical and sits pretty high on your leg. The shaft can range anywhere between six to 17 inches, but most commonly worn today is in between a nine and an 11 inch shaft. So they are gusseted at the top with a belt and buckle so you can tighten or loosen the opening to adjust for your calf. And since there are no laces, instead they have a strap going across the instep of the boot and that is fastened with yet again, another buckle. So when engineers were first made, they always came with a heel. And the research that I've done, I've seen it was almost always one and three quarters inches high. So to get a little bit into my engineer boots, they are an 11 inch shaft. The heel is about one and a half inches. I have a steel toe, so like I am totally safe when walking with these. Of course, you have the belt, the buckle, the gusset at the top of the boot, as well as the belt and the buckle for the instep of the boot. So my boots are a rough out leather, which means it is the backside of the fuzzy side of the skin. Personally, for me, I think engineers are one of the most perfect boot silhouettes out there. The heel and the tan color on my red wings kind of give it a cowboy boot vibe. And then the roundness, I don't know if you can see, the roundness of the toe gives it more of like a casual feel to it. Now, since engineers are made of leather, when you wear them frequently, they start to crease. And as you can probably see, I have some beautiful creases from the previous owner. I think it just gives it such amazing character and shape to the boot. I don't think this is the busiest boot, but the details that it has are amazing, like the buckles, like the creasing, and even the, some of the stitching that you see on the boot. I think it's perfect. So since the 1930s, there have been so many brands that have made variations of the engineer boot with different shaft heights, different materials, different outsoles, midsoles, that I truly think there is a boot for everybody out there. Now, I'm in no way an expert on how engineer boots should fit, but I did do research to know whether mine did. So I'm gonna give you a few simple pointers that I read that were really helpful. But if you are going to buy a pair of engineer boots, do not listen to me call a professional or an expert to see which boot is right for you so you don't screw up like I did. So point number one is you want a good balance between the boot being snug on your foot without being too uncomfortable. And I know this sounds obvious, but you can't adjust the fit of engineer boots. They either fit or they don't. Number two is you want your heel planted right in the heel cup of the boot. Now, what is a heel cup? It's basically just where your heel sits in the boot. And when you're walking, you want your heel to just be lifting out of the heel cup. If it's any more than that, your boots don't fit, they're probably too big for you. Tip number three is you want enough tension with the top of the boot so your foot isn't slipping out. That's kind of going back to that first note where 
you want to balance, you don't want it to be too tight because then it's way too uncomfortable. And last but not least, number four, you want your toes to have a little wiggle room with the toe box, but you don't want them to be swimming because that probably means your boot's too big for you, but then you don't want them to be too cramped because your toes will be on fire. Like mine. So when I first got these and I put them on, they were way too big for me. My heel was completely coming out of the heel cup. And after a few hours of wearing them, my legs hurt for 24 hours. So after that, I put some insoles in them and now they are definitely snug, possibly too snug. My heel just lifts out of the heel cup, which is good. And my toes might need a little bit more wiggle room. But when I first put these on, I gotta say, I felt like a badass, but my feet felt like they got ran over by a dump truck. Now, every time I've worn these boots, there has been either a different or new pain. At first, it was like my hips and my knees. Then it was my lower back and my heels. Then it was my toes were on fire. I don't know if it's my feet or the previous owner's feet, but the left boot fits a little bit more snug than the right boot. Maybe that's because he used his right boot for the motorcycle, I'm not really sure. On a positive note, what I will say is every time I wear these, the pain isn't as bad as previous. I feel like my feet are getting used to these and possibly the boot is molding to my foot, but that could kind of just be in my head. Not to say that these are perfect by any means, they still don't really fit yet. I might have to make some adjustments like trimming the, the front of the insole so my toes have a little bit more wiggle room, but I'm gonna keep wearing them a little bit more to see. Now, originally I planned on using these as like my everyday cowboy boots, but I might have to scratch out that everyday part. However, I'm very excited to style these and see what I can come up with in the future. If you don't know, I'm heavily influenced by military, Western wear, um, vintage Americana, traditional Japanese wear, and I feel like these boots go with all those styles. And luckily, the boots go with a lot of my wardrobe. I probably won't be going full the wild one with these just because I'm not trying to steal valor from the biker community. For the most part, I will be wearing these with like some slim straight jeans or these green fatigues that I'm wearing right now. Luckily or unluckily, I got these boots a month or two before the trailer for the new Austin Butler, Tom Hardy movie, The Bike Riders came out. From what I can tell, it is a movie about a biker gang and it looks like these boots could probably go with almost all of their outfits. So if you see engineers rise in popularity, it's probably because of the movie. For those of you that don't know, I do costume design videos as well. So if you're interested in me reviewing the bike riders, let me know down below. For now, these will be worn with some slim straight blue jeans, some green fatigues and some cargos. But honestly, I'm most excited to experiment and see what I can come up with. Because so far, I've really been happy with the way I've styled these. Like this outfit with this black mandarin collared shirt that's in more of a relaxed fit. And then I have those running cargos on bottom. And I really like the running cargos because I can play with how much of the boot I show, not only by just rolling it up, but by cinching it at the hem. So if I want to show more of the boot, I'll just cuff it up once and then cinch it. Or if I want the boot to be more low key, I will uncinch it, roll it down, and just have the boots peek out a little bit. But then I also love just wearing these blue slim straight jeans stacked on top of the boots so you can see all the creases and the belt buckles. And then throwing on a slim white tee is just so perfect. This is probably the most the wild one I'll ever get. But I also had to throw in some Western influence like that black bandana neckerchief. Now, although these boots have been and still are considered to be a work boot, I think there are ways to wear these formally. So with the blue jean outfit, I added this houndstooth sport coat. And although the jeans still keep it very casual, I feel like the sport coat kind of made it a little bit more mature, a little bit more formal. And if I wanted to go a little bit further with it looking more formal, I would probably just get a pair of straight dark rinse jeans to cover more of the boot. Like you might not be able to wear these to a wedding, but there's definitely ways of making this more formal looking. But then again, who says I can't wear this to a wedding? Invite me to your wedding, I'm wearing these. Let's go. That's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you think of the boots, how I styled them, or if you've ever been let down this hard, possibly. My fingers are crossed that this fairy tale ends up a happily ever after, but I'll keep it posted. Follow me on my social media so you can see how else I've styled these boots, as well as some more fashion and costume design videos. It's all linked down below, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Also, let me know if you want me to review The Wild One or Rebel Without a Cause for costume design, because those are beautiful movies. That is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.